Hello, today we are going to learn how to make an oval using a knitting loom, any loom. You can make it however wide you want, you can make it however long you want. We're going to be using a uh, garter stitch, so knitting pearl rows, and we're going to be using short rows around the curves. Okay, let's get started. I'm using the um, all-in-one knitting board to demonstrate but you can make this oval on any loom with any number of pegs and today for the demonstration I'm just using some um, Hobby Lobby I love this yarn you can see I've got it on clearance Woo -hoo! Um, I, I mean I love this wool as opposed to I love this yarn so here we go uh, make you a slip knot and you can either put it on your first peg or you can um, use an anchor peg. I usually use an anchor peg, but I'm not going to today. Um, and I'm just going to do an E-wrap cast on for five pegs. Because what I'm doing is I'm giving enough pegs to demonstrate for the short rows. And then I'm going to... Um, and also so it'll go faster and it will be the same size of course as my red uh, beginner as you as you can see I messed up on a couple of my of course it was early early morning um, on my slip stitches on the edges it's not my best work um, I was mainly trying to see that I could do it so and this one's done over five stitches on the all-in-one as well so here we go now I have got to start off with we're just going to go ahead and knit that first one you don't have to you can slip it um, if you uh, it makes it a little bit easier to pick your stitches up later if you are going to be binding it off sorry I got distracted there for a moment okay so all I did was I e-wrap cast on and then I knit my way back and I'm using a u-wrap that I loosen so if you see me pushing on my stitch right after I knit over on my u-wrap that is how I do my u-wrap and it loosens the stitch it makes it um, identical in height to a um, a traditional knit stitch or regular knit stitch now then in order for our edges to have this to have these nice chained edges if you can see that um, without having this little bump right here like I missed it that one time on this side um, then we that's why we slip our first stitch so you're going to slip your first stitch and you're going to purl back to the see if I can't get that better in frame okay to your next to the last stitch so no matter how wide it is you're going to always slip your first stitches and on your purl row you will knit off your last stitch on your purl row and the reason you do that without pulling your loop off obviously is to well come on Renita okay Renita's having problems here yes I am talking in third person um there we go is for that uh, for that edge because if you don't knit off that last that last stitch if you purl it it does something funky so okay so that's your first garter ridge or your second row so again I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to uh, do another one and like I said any any width that you do is gonna be half so however many stitches you put on it's gonna be half of your oval okay so we're going to slip that first one try to get that closer and still focus 
It's kind of hard for me to see. Okay, so skip that first one. Just bring it to the round front. And you can use an A wrap if you prefer or a flat knit. Just remember that um, your flat knits are going to be shorter than your pearls and your e-wraps are going to be taller than your pearls so even though you can still do that with your garter stitch it will make the uh, garter ridges look just a little bit different okay so then I'll do that all the way over to the end of our row so no matter how many stitches so you're going to knit to the end of your first or this would be actually your third row but and then we're going to slip again our first stitch. We're going to bring it back to the bottom to do our purls. And you will purl back to the last stitch. And then you will always knit that last stitch. Now then. And then knit off the last stitch. Okay, my directions then are to um, then you're going to knit how you're going to repeat rows one and two you're knitting your purl row for however whatever the length of your middle section is and whenever I refer to the middle section it's going to be your um, that does not include your curved ends so however long you need it in the middle so I'm going to finish knitting my length for the middle part and then I will meet back up with you for my short rows Okay, now then I am finishing up. I have done, um, let me finish up my pearl here and then I will knit that last row. I have done 10 garter ridges or 20 rows of the knit pearl. Now then you can see, you can count if, if, you know how to count your, your rows. The easiest way to count your rows if you lose track on when using, uh, when you're slipping your stitches on the side is you, you get that nice chain right here whenever you slip your stitch. But for every chain that you have here is two rows. So if you're counting your rows, even with knit, I mean, if you're just doing knit or uh, with the garter stitch and with the garter ridges, so that would be every two rows. So you can count, see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then this top one right here next to the thing is ten. That means I've got ten garter ridges on here, or twenty rows. A little fun fact for you. Now then, here's where all the fun begins. Now then, how I've got it written, it depends on, um, you would need to cast on, what I did not say at the beginning was that you do need to cast on an odd number in order for how I'm showing you to do the short rows for it to work out properly. So an odd number cast on will equal an even number across. 